Are you feeling troubled? You will do after watching this series. Here are 19 reasons to watch Haven. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave Wilson at Dave Wilson on Instagram. And this is the place where I talk to you about all things Stephen King. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoy what you see here, do check out the links in the description. You can find my range of Stephen King themed band shirts. You can pick up a misery shirt in the style of Randy MC, for example. You can get my collection of short stories once more around the sun. Sign up to my newsletter and a bunch of other things. But most of all, thank you for checking this video out. So we are back on the 19 Reasons to Watch trail and we are in a brand new decade of movies and adaptations. We are kicking that off with Haven. So this was a TV show on sci-fi that started in 2010 and somehow ran for 78 episodes across five seasons. It's very, very, very loosely based on The Colorado Kid. It stars Emily Rose, Lucas Bryant and Eric Balfour amongst others. And, well, it's a bit of a slog to get through. So, I'll level with you. I had never seen Haven before covering it for this very video. I'd been saving it for a couple of years, knowing I would get here. And I watched season one for this video. And frankly, that was enough. Not just for the video, just in general. So this time around, I'm gonna give you six general reasons to watch Haven. And then we're gonna hit the spoiler alert button. And after that, I'm going to go through the 13 episodes in season one and give you some of my my thoughts. So I'm going to take you through my notes from those episodes of season one. And well, that will count as our 19 reasons. OK, if you want to try Haven for yourself, you can stream the full thing in the US on Freebie and Amazon Prime. And in the UK, you can get it on Amazon as well, but you have to pay for it, um, which not going to lie, I wouldn't advise. Okay, let's strap in, let's get this done. Here are 19 reasons to watch Haven. Okay, so takeaway reason. The premise of this is actually pretty cool. We are set in a coastal main town called Haven. Nothing to do with the town where the Tommy Knockers is set. Just called Haven. And basically weird stuff happens there. They have a history of things called the troubles and i will come to that name from a uk perspective in a few reasons but basically the troubles are when just weird supernatural shit happens and it's all just a bit odd the weather goes crazy cracks appear in the ground all of those kind of things and our lead character is fbi agent audrey parker who arrives in town to solve a case which she does very very quickly but then ends up sticking around mainly because she's attracted by the weirdness of the place, but also somebody shows her a newspaper clipping from 20 odd years earlier of the Colorado kid, and the woman in the newspaper clipping is a spitting image of Audrey. Now, Audrey never knew her birth mum, so she assumes that this woman is her birth mum, but wants to stick around to find out more. And as we go through the season, that story inches along, and we also get more examples of all of the troubles and the weirdness that happens in Haven. This seems to come around every 27 years. Funny number that. So yeah, little town with weird supernatural Stephen King stuff happening. That should be good, right? Well, unfortunately, no. The show very quickly just becomes a really dull police procedural show. Albeit with supernatural stuff instead of regular crimes, but it's just so ploddy an energy draining despite really good performance from from emily rose in the lead just doesn't do it for me i'm afraid now this show didn't have much of an impact in the uk and i can think of a couple of reasons why that might have been so number one this is a prime example of how us tv shows and uk tv shows differ wildly in the us it's totally fine to stretch a thing out over 13 episodes maybe even more in some shows and the core interesting storyline, i.e. the Colorado Kid thing and why is Audrey being pictured 20 years before, just move that along literally inch by inch every episode and then have these sort of mysteries of the week going on from episode to episode. In the UK, this would be a six episode season with maybe 45 minutes to an hour tops, but probably half an hour to 45 minutes. 
and the main focus would be the main interesting story and we'd probably get some other stuff going on so i've been brought up watching tv that is quite different to this and i think that's why i struggled to just care because it was so formulaic the mysteries of the week it was just like oh okay well if we're seeing such and such a character seven minutes into the episode they're going to be the key character so yeah it just doesn't work for a uk viewer like me of course another reason why it probably didn't fly in the uk was calling something the troubles just do a google history of the violence in northern ireland and you will see why labeling something the troubles was never going to work over here now unsurprisingly this show does lead into plenty of stephen king easter eggs and i'm almost tempted to watch season two episode one purely because it has an homage to the georgie scene from it but you know i might just look that up on youtube actually and apparently william shatner turns up towards the end of haven's run which again i'm kind of intrigued by but also might just just google you know other easter eggs i will try and cover from season one once we've hit the spoiler alert so lastly before spoilers probably guess i did not have fun with this just really not any fun at all and it's not even on letterboxd so i can't even log it and add it to my list of stephen king annotations so double double gut punch Okay, from this point onwards, I'm dipping into my notes from each of the 13 episodes of season one. So there might be things that spoil the first time watch. So consider this your spoiler alert. If you want to bail here, skip ahead to the outro using the timestamp in the description. But otherwise, stick around because I'm going to take you through season one of Haven. Okay, so episode one, my big note was meh. We have a couple of familiar faces here. So Nicholas Campbell from The Dead Zone, um, Frank Dodd from The Dead Zone place the police chief and we get Nicole DeBoer from the Dead Zone TV series is in this episode and the key hook of this one is basically a woman who can control the weather or can affect the weather when she's angry. Now at this point in my watching experience I thought okay that's weird. What I didn't realise was that basically every episode the mystery is somebody in Haven gets upset or angry and some weird stuff happens. That's what I mean about it becoming formulaic really early on. But we also get introduced to the Colorado kid clipping here. And this is obviously where Audrey shows up. So I like it's okay as an opener, but still a bit of a shrug. Episode two, my notes are basically just butterflies and weirdness. This is kind of spooky dreams. Again, somebody's upset, their dreams become reality, all of that kind of stuff. Um, some bad CGI in here. And... Yeah, not much more to add, really. Episode 3. I started noticing at this point that one of the executive producers was Charles Ardai, who is the guy who runs Hard Case Crime, which put out the Colorado Kid. So that makes sense. Anyway, this episode I labelled The Madness of Music. And this is just a, a sort of strange one where... Somebody's wife is in a psychiatric unit and when he plays music to her, she becomes totally with it again. Um, but it causes previously sane people to go insane. Um, just very, very odd. And features some really bad miming of musical instruments. Okay, so episode four, we have food that is just rotting instantly at any given moment and it's all really weird and gross we get a great scene with a cow's udder spilling out and there's a random scottish guy in this episode um there's some mentions of Derry. we get talk about how the troubles were in haven 27 years ago like pennywise basically my takeaways from this episode were that eric balfour is a bit of a hunk and my main note was god this show is so bland this is only episode four so episode five Another odd one, extreme aging. So basically, this one is very weird, very complex and very dull. But basically, there's a woman who can take different forms, goes around town, hooks up with men in town, sleeps with them, gets pregnant, basically gives birth a day later. And if those dads have any contact with their babies, they age instantly and rapidly until they die like just 
I just, just what? What? Okay, episode six. This one's kind of fun. It's an episode where uh, animals are taking their revenge on humans. So we see like a rabid wolf. Uh, we see a hilarious angry moose. Um, a really bad CGI bear all attacking humans. And it turns out that they are attacking the humans who shot them. So these are dead animals who've been um, stuffed by a taxidermist. And they come back to life and attack the people who shot them. Uh, but there's talk about silver bullets and stuff like that. Um, yeah, again, the angry moose is worth watching, if nothing else. So episode seven, we have cursed sketches. So in this one, as somebody who can draw, who draws sketches of people in town or the town itself, and if she touches them or crumples them up or burns them or whatever, that thing happens in real life. It's a very Stephen Kingy thing. Um, the opening is pretty good, where we see this this man being like this super bendy man and his arms are sort of snapping and legs and stuff. Um, but my main note for this was I actually enjoyed this episode because I ate a whisper gold while watching this episode. Also at this point I put OMG six more episodes. Yeah, I was having fun. Episode eight. So by now I've realized that basically episode, every episode is something weird happens when someone in Haven gets angry. This one, we have the dark man, but it's not Randall Flagg. It's, it's somebody's shadow who is going out and killing people. So people are being murdered by a shadow with a shadow knife and stuff like that. It's kind of creepy. I guess one of the better ones. Uh, um, yeah, we'll just, we'll maybe skip past the, I don't know what they were doing, but Audrey goes on the newspaper website, searches for the dark man, and is returned an article about a black man living in Haven. And, you know, they try and comment on it being like, oh, we didn't have many black people in Haven then. Like, just don't put that scene in. Like, you're just digging your own grave there. Okay, episode nine is probably the one of the series that I would maybe recommend watching. So it's Audrey's birthday, and everybody has gone to a a deserted hotel for a surprise party for her. And we realise that we are in the presence of a uh, a skin man, a sort of shapeshifter type person who um, will kill somebody and take their form. Um, and this is where we get more of the unearthing of the 27 years stuff. And this is also certainly where the writers start thinking, oh, we can lean into Easter eggs here. So we get a mention of, well, this, I noticed in this episode, Flag was mentioned in the opening credits, but we get... Um, somebody getting a copy of Misery for their birthday, a Misery book, and they say about Paul Sheldon, um, the, the whole thing who had his um, foot chopped off. And we discover that Audrey's police partner, can't remember his name now, Nathan maybe, his middle name is Thaddeus, like the dark half. Um, so yeah, all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh, we can do stuff. Um, like I say, probably the best one. Uh, and it finally moves the main story on a bit, um, but still not great. Anyway, only four episodes to go. Episode 10. This is basically a rerun of Firestarter, somebody who has pyrokinesis. So we get lots of explosions. Um, the highlight being when the kid with pyrokinesis blows himself up. Um, yeah, cool. Everything else about it. Okay, episode 11. We get this very complicated scenario of Audrey and Eric and some guys being out on a boat and they take the boat hostage and yada 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 there's a reference to children at the corn there's a reference to little tall island um but Audrey sums it all up for me at the end when she says I quit me too but unfortunately there are two more episodes episode 12 my note at this just said make it stop um and my other incisive notes are oh no a skeleton oh no a ghost uh, but we do get a model of Christine, the car, in this, which I did genuinely enjoy. Everything else about this episode, I mean, I was so out by this point. I just didn't care. And then episode 13, the season finale, we see somebody who has been just left Shawshank. He's not a, not a particularly good guy, but he doesn't last very long. We find out that the chief of police is not the dad of the other police guy. And then we see that the chief of police is possibly the person who is causing all the troubles and he blows himself up as well um and then we get the big hook 
to take us into season two, where somebody else turns up saying they're Audrey Parker from the FBI, while our Audrey realises that she is actually Lucy, the person in the photos, and she's been in a haven before. And it's, I guess, mildly interesting from a point of view of maybe going into season two, but I will not be watching season two anytime soon. Okay, there we go. A slightly different approach to 19 reasons, but at least, at least I don't have to watch Haven anymore. Let me know what you think of this one. Have you watched Haven? Should I, should I at some point go back and watch the other four seasons? The other, what would that be? 65 episodes? Please say no. I mean, I still haven't gone back and watched the other five seasons of The Dead Zone either, so... Yeah, I think life is too short to waste on bad TV. Anyway, thank you for checking this out. If you've come this far and you haven't subscribed already, I mean, you really should subscribe to this channel because if you're this interested in Stephen King stuff, frankly, you will you will love my channel. So subscribe. Um, I've got a collection of short stories called Once More Around the Sun. It's won a couple of awards recently. You can check that out. I have a newsletter you can subscribe to. I have a range of Stephen King band shirts, like my Misery Red DMC one. But most of all, thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope you enjoyed it. And next time, when we cover movies and adaptations, we are welcoming our first former James Bond into the world of Stephen King stuff. So do join me for that. <laughs>